but it would be nice to somehow not have you guys just sitting there going. Bleh. I think if we can keep it as chill and relaxed. Yeah, it possible, shouldn't be as structured. It should. Isn't gonna draw many people. <laughs> <laughs>Today in studio, we're stoked to have Ryan Spencer, Zach Adams, also known, <laughs> as, <laughs> also known as Zach Heinrich. Heinrich. Known in Zach Wales, Heinrich. it's Zach Adams. Yeah, Zach <laughs> Adams. And then Mike Doyle, who Mike was my youth pastor. I think he was for five seconds yep. your yep. youth pastor. Mm-hmm. Yep. For a little yep. bit. Your he reminds I don't know how long, but it felt like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was failing some classes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Mike's just kind of in studio today. It's kind of unplanned, unscripted, but just an opportunity for, man, Blast from the past, different eras yeah. to come and kind of just have a time to have a conversation and catch up. So I don't know, like Mike, maybe tell us a little bit. And for all those 10 people that are joining us today, uh, just a little bit about who you are and whatever you think. Was that? That's thunder. Oh, that's thunder. Is that God? <laughs> when Doyle speaks. Be sure to like and follow us below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I I actually became a Christian at this church. Sorry, look at the camera. Do um, whatever you want. No, I became a Christian at this church 28 years ago. I used to live down on, uh, uh, what is the, Bay Street. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. And I used to ride my bike through here back when it was just this building. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Roger Jan led worship. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I came here with Randy Pittman, brought me here for the first time. Okay. And uh, what year? Like 80, 90, 2000? That was 92. 92. Hmm. Okay. Yep. And what happened was is, uh, Tom Hudson, mm. he was doing like, he did like a Christian surf film out of the beach. He rented like a hotel on the beach and um, it was called, it was a wave of life. Oh yeah. It was produced by Carrie Chapel Costa Mesa and Tom did this surf movie and he invited everybody out and they had all these booths and a guy was surfing and then he would talk about Jesus and a guy was surfing and talking about Jesus and then we, we kind of like figured out like halfway into this movie <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> the Jesus juke. Yeah, we bait and switch, which is ironic. I would end up doing that for five years. <laughs> King of bait. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bait and switch for Jesus, yeah, right? that's and, right. Yeah. And I was, I was mad and that's, that's what's uh, ironic about it. Yeah, it it's, God used you, yeah. It started off a chain of events that led me to Christ and then I would end up yeah. doing the exact same thing. I would bait and switch people for all over the world for years. And, <laughs> And, uh, Who likes free stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Zach Adams does. And, uh, but uh, so so Tom did this film, and I I actually kind of walked away from that night angry, but Randy oh. walked away really convicted. So you mm. were there the night Randy got saved. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So Randy got Randy was like after the movie, he's like, oh my god, and we're like, get, let's get out of here. And Randy was, <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of here, Randy. And Randy and that began that literally began the whole process, and so I. I I could trace myself. I tell Tom oh. Hudson this too. I could trace it back and say, Tom, it's because you stepped out in faith and showed mm-hmm. that film and mm-hmm. had the courage to do it and put up with the negative pushback from Probably, uh, yeah. us little surf punks. Mm-hmm. That began a chain of events of living to Christ. So Randy started coming back to church. He started coming here and he started going to the youth ministry and Roger Jam was a youth pastor. And then Sean Brown got saved. Mm. And then Wayne Jones started coming and mm-hmm. little Yancey started coming. And then I started coming and... And I came for about a month and a half, and I always tell people, like, I was a kid you'd never want in your youth ministry. Mm-hmm. I would ask every difficult question. I'd make fun of Roger. I was just, <laughs> How old are you, like 15? Uh, 18. Okay. Okay, yeah. almost out of high school or just out, yeah. But the interesting thing was is the f- from the first night I came, I will never forget it. I walked in, and I acted like I was too cool. It was dumb. I didn't want to be here. But the moment I walked in, I felt the presence of God. Mm. Mm. And I knew that what these people had was the truth. And I was thinking about it yesterday before I became a Christian. I got really into the New Age movement. There used to be a New Age store in Harbortown, and they would sell crystals and, <laughs> you know, and meditation books. And I got into all that stuff. Mm. And But I got to a point where I kind of went through all that, and I realized that it was all – it was fake. Like hmm, there was yeah, no, no substance to it. No, yeah. there was no substance to it. And I studied Buddhism and Hinduism and Tao. I mean, you guys probably heard my story a million times, but mm. – but what struck me was when I came to New, it was called New Life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even the name like struck me. Because mm-hmm. I remember the, I got invited to come here because I was at a party on the beach and Randy and Sean, we were all part of this big party scene. They would still go to the same parties, but they would drink Gatorade and tell everybody about Jesus. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Hydrated That's Christians. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm dead serious. That's awesome. And I And we went to this big like cake party on the beach and Randy and Sean were there. They had their Gatorade and they're like, no one really wanted to talk to them. <laughs> and, uh, hair down to their hips. Yeah. And I was just, and I, and I, yeah, long blonde hair. <laughs> and uh, Gatorade. Yeah, and they had like, they were twins. They had the same long blonde hair. And then, 
And I walked up to him, and they probably don't remember this. I just started talking to him about whatever bizarre thing I was into, and they said, they said, Mike, they said, we've been going to this church called New Life. And even just the name itself, like, struck me. And deep in the back of my mind, I thought, man, I want a new life. Mm-hmm. 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 And they said, Jesus has come into our lives, and he's, mm. and he's. Then they said the funniest thing, and I've never forgotten this. They said, they said yeah, it's like Jesus makes us high. Uh-huh. Mm. But it's better than any drug we've ever done. And I went, tell me more about this Jesus. <laughs> you caught my out ear my there, buddy. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I, speaking my language I can here. see it in my mind. I can tell you verbatim. Yeah. It was the strangest. And I was just, I talked to him for a few minutes. And they were not the two guys that I used to know. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. I saw a change. Like they were like glowing. They had this light inside of them. And I was kind of like this hippie. So I was like, whoa. And I, they were just glowing and they had this love. And we were all, I mean, we were friends, but we were just very worldly friends. Mm. And so I, I didn't. I don't think I ever had real true friends until I became a Christian and they just had all this love and I was like, wow, this is weird. And I, I walked away. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, later guys. And I couldn't quit thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And a week went by and then I called uh, Sean out of the blue. I said, hey, Sean, what's going on? He says, hey, we're going to youth group tonight at New Life. Do you want to come? Mm-hmm. I totally wanted to come, but mm-hmm. I was way too cool for church. I was like, yeah, whatever. I got nothing else to do. Sean picked me up, brought me and I, and I remember that first night I came, I felt the presence of God. I knew that what these people had was the truth. Mm. Wow. And I knew that of all those religions and all the philosophy and everything, that that was a dead end. But I, the moment I walked in, I was like, yeah, this, this is mm. real. Mm. And it then, was this building and Roger Jan was the... Mm-hmm. Yep, it was this building. And it was, yeah, kind of like how they are offices yeah. now. It was one of these empty offices. I prayed to receive Christ. Wow. Crazy. That's amazing. Wow. And everybody like... Everybody has a different salvation experience, but I had a, like a born again experience. Yeah, darkness mm-hmm. to light. Yeah, I mean, I felt like electricity go through my body. Mm-hmm. I, I remember it was like it was like dropping acid or something. It was like mm-hmm. I remember walking down the hallway and stepping outside. I mean, I've told this story ten million times, but it was just like it was, I stepped into a brand new world. That mm-hmm. D.L. Moody had the same kind of experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He actually he got saved in New York City. He was down on Wall Street one day, hmm. and it's when he had like a born again experience. Hmm. It was like I stepped into a brand new world, and I'm like, wow. and I'm like, I know exactly what he's talking about. Wow, wow. that's cool. And the other part that's of it, it, and I'll then we can open up talk about other sure. things is, uh, and the other part of it was little Yancey was going to YouTube at that time, and little Yancey and I we always had this like surf rivalry. Yeah, mm. you splashed him when you met him. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. We we brought we mended fences over Laos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Men. Well, and, well, Yancey was king of the peak until I came, yeah. and, I, and I just made his life miserable for four years, you know. And he was still king of the peak, but he, he yeah. was, you know, I was made his life difficult for him. Sure. And uh, so we just had this kind of like constant rival, and we kind of like hated each other. <laughs> and um, but we were friends, and we, you know, we try to be friends, and then we would kind of not. And then he was there the night I got saved, mm. and we, we, I stepped outside, and they were playing volleyball, and I just prayed to receive Christ with Roger Jan and Randy Pittman. And I was born again, and I stepped outside, and I saw Lily Yancey, and I felt love for him. Oh, wow. wow. That's pretty amazing. Wow. We love you, Yancey. No. <laughs> we love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're good now, right? No, <laughs> but no, that I, would be a setting to have Yancey, right? Yeah. We'd never get out of this room. No, and, 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 I, and, and to Yancey's credit, if you're watching Yancey, is he... Uh, he took me under his wing. Yeah, cool. that's mm. cool. And I was living in like a party house in Warrington. Mm. Like I would come up from youth group, and there'd be people like, sm- ah, yeah, I don't know. Doing yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. doing yeah. drugs, illicit and things. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of things that were going on, right? So, <laughs> and Gatorade. But that's what, I would com- that's what I would come home to. I would be right. at youth group, oh, yeah. you know, like. And then come home to some light, 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 the dark. Yeah, learning about Jesus and playing volleyball, and then I'd go back to this like <laughs> <laughs> party. Volleyball, bumps that spike. This party house in Warrington, right? And, but I didn't know anything about Christianity because I didn't grow up in the church, like at mm. all. I was just completely... You know, I started going to Catholic church when I was about six. Mm-hmm. And little auntie would come to my party house in Warrington, mm. and he taught me the Bible, and he'd pray for me. Wow. And he no discipled way. me. Wow. No That's crazy. Yeah, That's amazing. I never knew that. Yep. He discipled me in the very beginning. And then my dad got r- stationed in Rhode Island, and so they, my family was leaving Pensacola. I could have stayed because I was living on my own at that point, but I just saw that as a sign like, like get out of Pensacola mm-hmm. because I was too tied. I probably would have got pulled back into the party scene. Mm-hmm. And I thought, if I don't leave with my family, I, I'm, I'm not going to follow Christ. Yeah. Well. Wow. And so Yancey and I, we kind of went, you know, okay. we kind of went, went our How ways. long did you hang here after you became a Christian? Like you said, 92 or 93? Not uh, not very long. I mean, not I got very long. Like maybe like three months. Oh, oh wow. That, like, oh, that quick. Wow. Well, that's the crazy thing, too, was, so then I moved to Rhode Island, and I, and I, you know, I said, Roger, can you find me a church? He found me in this little Calvary Chapel in, huh. War, in Warwick, Rhode Island. Huh. 
Rich Chapman, and I'm still friends with him to this day. And then when COVID hit, and I was reducing the expenses for our church, because we, we're a pop-up church, so we, sure. we, have, we have like a box truck that we keep all of our stuff uh, in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I drove it to his house in Rhode Island, and that's where our box truck has been for the last year. No Crazy. Way. God doesn't waste anything. <laughs> he doesn't waste anything. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I found that's it, really cool. It was a little church meeting in like a VFW hall in Warwick, Rhode Island, about an hour mm. from my house. And mm. Rich took me under his wing and pastored me. And mm. he was the one who told me about Cary Chapel Bible College. Oh, that's how you heard about mm. it. Because I always assumed you were here. You went from here to yeah. California or no. something. Or... It, and one last, one last funny story is, <laughs> and when I lived in Newport, like I didn't know anything about Christianity. So there was like this one weird Christian bookstore and there's like this one weird Christian radio station and I would just go to everything. <laughs> yeah. I went to like Tent Revival. Yeah. I, I, I was like I was like a three month old Christian. I'm like at Tent Revivals and stuff and like <laughs> I was going to like like Word of Faith churches. Yeah. I was, anything that was a Christian because I had no there. discernment. Yeah. I was going to like Catholic masses and yeah. <laughs> I was just down. I was just down for anything. Like Whatever. and uh you know, and then my you know, my pastor was really good and then I and I went from there to Bible okay. Yeah. And I remember when you came back this way, um, must have been around the no- year 99 or 2000. Yep. You had gone to Calvary Bible College at Twin Peaks. You went yep. to Multnomah yep. and did a degree there. Then I remember you coming in like a VW bus. Yep. And that hmm. little like door that kind of enters into my current office, you, that was like the admin entrance. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I remember you pulling up and my dad going, that's the new youth pastor. And I was like, Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in from and you're thinking, Oregon. You're thinking, how can I destroy yeah, him? Yeah, what can I do to this yeah. guy? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was probably how 16, old were you? 17, 16? 18, somewhere in there. I was, you know, I was born in 81, so that puts me at about 17, 18, you yeah. know, kind of my senior year of high school. So that's kind of when I first encountered you. Um, I'd heard the name Mike Doyle, but of the famous surfer Mike Doyle. Like a friend of mine shot me a signed Burn. picture the other day, and I was like, Mike Doyle, like the... Wait, when, surfer dude? Well, or? you know, at right in front of Huntington Surf and Sport in yeah. Huntington Beach, they have like the surfers, like um, it's kind of like the like the stars in Hollywood. Yeah. Oh. There's one for Mike Doyle. There's one for Mike Doyle. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. So whenever I'm there with a friend, I'll go. Let me show you something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're always like blown away. They're like, Oh my gosh. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I just... But I mean, you had. I, I try had... to be. I try to be humble about yeah. these things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you call it the blessing or bummer, but I was in your youth group. Like I think when it met in this room, because I remember Coffee playing house. like. This was a coffee house. This yeah. was like a room. This wall wasn't here. It was, like a, like it was a, a multi-purpose room. It was a multi-purpose yep. room. And I had a punk band. We like led something for a Halloween thing. And we did a, I was in the worship band or something. And then I went to school. And then that's when you guys kind of came on the horizon. Because I wasn't here when the skate park was built. And you're going mm. to Europe and Mexico. None of that was my experience. I just, the VW guy pulled in. And we yeah. had this like multi-purpose room. That was my high school experience. Ooh. But then you guys moved into portables and like had yeah. a whole other yeah. era like of ministry that yeah. you guys kind of benefited from. Yeah, we, yeah. Got, we got kind of kicked out of the multi-purpose room. Oh, it was done. It got then turned we, into a coffee house. Then we were putting a double-wide portable yeah, out double back. back. Yeah, I worked here and I had to clean them and Doyle oh. would always get on me because he's like, man, you're not cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, I guess I'm just a dirty guy because I would look in there and be like, it looks clean. And Mike was like, uh-uh. And then I remember, I think I would either do it to you or Mark Swift. I'm showing all my cards here. I would, there was these prayer request boxes and I would like fold them and write name, things on it and put them in there like, like fake prayer requests so that you guys would be like, oh. And I remember Mark Swift or you came up to me like, are I've you I've been putting- abducted, what? <laughs> yeah. And so you guys would go in there like during the week probably and like <laughs> open it and be like Chuck Smith was here because I would like write Chuck Smith on it or something but I remember Mark or you came up to me like are you re-? <laughs> totally got me like, are you putting in fake pair request and I was like oh <laughs> so one of you figured it out I was probably the annoying you guys all day so was Mark Swift your junior high pastor yep Mark was and Doyle then I moved up to Doyle yeah and it was modular time out there in the portables was that when you yeah. had um I don't remember the name of the band, but there was like a PAX 217 Sli- style band. Advocate. Oh. Advocate. Advocate. Yeah. Like, Miguel. Like, like rap rock or something. Or, Advocate. I don't know what it would have been called. It was called. like P.O.D.-ish. P.O.D. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. That would have been the era. We early we 2000s. Are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. Sonny, whatever his name is. Yeah. So that would have been like 2002, 2001, yeah. 2002. Well, yeah. Because I graduated yeah. in 2005. Okay. Same. Same. Kind of. I'm not sure. No, I did. <laughs> I, I don't remember Summer the school. portable era. I, when I started showing up, it was because the Dillahays. Uh, Jesse and Andy Dillahay mm-hmm. had invited me like hey come stay the night at our house and they lived in proper and we'll skate and we'll go to church you know the next mm. the next morning or it's whatever. so weird because you and me never hung out I know but anyways that's, yeah, but that's, that was kind of the thing that brought you to Calvary at the time you came to changed. the youth room I did yeah yeah I came oh, to the youth right. room yeah. and I remember uh, 
actually, I think how they started setting it back up was how it was when right. I first came. Reverse that way. Yeah. yeah, the stage was right there. Well, yeah, I called it Focus Youth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Because I was into this Christian hardcore band called Focus. Focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that band. <laughs> like focusing a board. And it, yeah, <laughs> and it stayed Focus Youth until Jason yeah. Gallagher. Yeah. Yeah. Because I passed he painted over it. Youth. <laughs> he painted yeah. Over I did it for two or three years as Focus Youth. Yeah. And then it was Jason. It was Focus Youth. <laughs> it was. And it's heyday <laughs> with you and me. That's when it has happened. It was very focused. Youth Alive. Was youth Alive was Junior High. high. Youth, yeah. Mark Swift. Yep. But you guys all have a history that relates to skate. I mean, you have a beautiful new T-shirt on now. Yeah. Now you run Coastline Skate. Yeah. But so Zach co-leads. Yeah, yeah. yeah co-leads. Yeah. But Tom Hudson kind of got it started, maybe? Well, what happened was was when I was going to Multnomah, and I was in town, and Tom, we we got pizza at Mr. Whatever's Pizza out on the beach. Mm. Papa's so, Pizza. Yeah, Papa's Pizza. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting pizza, and... I know my pizza. And I was on staff at Skate Church in Portland. <laughs> oh, you were? Ooh, okay. And that was like the first skate ministry in America. Oh, like, wow. And um, Quick question. Was that with like Tim Mackey? Yes. Did, so you and Tim Mackey were like... The yeah. Bible dude? The but, guy who does yeah, all the, the The Bible things. project yeah. guy. Yeah. So That's he great. was involved. Yes. Thanks, That's Tim Mackey, if you're crazy. watching. This. Tim Mackey. Tim was my best friend when I was at Multnomah. Wow. Man, that guy is a huge asset to the church. I love Man. those little read yeah. scripture things. Yeah. And, Tim, and Tim was... Um, I was in Tim's wedding... Oh, cool. Dude. And I actually, yeah, I have a story about Tim's wedding. And but, <laughs> so, uh, but, but Tim was on staff at, a, Tim was on staff at Skaters. Tim was a really good skater. Hmm. And then another friend of ours, Andy Teeter, he was on staff at Skate Church. Tim teaches Hebrew at Harvard University now. Wow. Whoa. And so Tim, what happened was, is all those guys, they had a professor at Multnomah named Ray Lubeck, and Ray got them all into Old Testament studies. Hmm. And so then they all wanted to get their Hebrew degree, so they all went to University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, Tim, Andy, who's at Harvard, and they um, got their masters in Hebrew at University of Wisconsin Madison. Tim stuck around and got his PhD in Hebrew at University of Wisconsin Madison. Wow, wow. Uh, uh, Andy, after he got his masters in Hebrew at Madison, then he went to Notre Dame and got his PhD at Notre Dame, mm. and then went from Notre Dame to he chair. I think I think he chairs the Hebrew department now at Harvard. Wow, that's Harvard amazing. Harvard University, and then Tim has the Bible. So skateboarders that's like crazy. are not stupid. But, and yeah, those, right. but, <laughs> those and those guys were super good skateboarders. Yeah, Ooh. like there's a there used to be a really famous skateboard shop in Portland called Cal's Pharmacy, huh. and all the Cal's guys were back in the day. That was like a really famous like skate shop in Portland. Did they switch it to just pharmacy now? Yeah, yeah, I know pharmacy. Dude, yeah. no way. Yeah, yeah. the guys the guys who own one. pharmacy are Christians. Wow. Hmm. That's so crazy. Kyle, Kyle, and his brother own it, and then Kyle also, um, like, rode. For, he rode for Adidas, and so we we would always get like free Adidas. And the stuff. shoe company, uh huh. Adidas, dude. Adidas, Adidas. <laughs> the shell toes. But that the like sport, that's what brought you guys together. <laughs> oh, oh sorry, I, yeah. I have stories. It's like it's like Inception. It's like worlds. Yeah, worlds. you got also <laughs> so, the world. Yeah. So, so I, I'm in town. <laughs> I'm on staff at Skate Church. I'm getting pizza with Tom, and Tom's just trying to think of outreach ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Tom was always really good about that, you know, and he's yeah, like, creative. and I said, Tom, I said, you know what you ought to do? I said, you should build like a skate park and use the skateboard ramps and that'll draw the kids. And he's like, really? He says, well, what, what, we, what should I, what should oh, we get? Yeah. So on a napkin, <laughs> no I drew like a little basic, like, like pyramid and a kicker and, and like a little quarter, like what we always had. I was like, right. just build this. And he's like, oh, okay. And, and he went and did it. Hmm. I think before, I remember we, when wow. we were relaunching Skate, I asked him like he some initial thoughts that they were doing. I think he said he thought that you were supposed to put cones out so kids could like swerve in and out. <laughs> yeah. And then he, he, I don't remember the whole story, but he was like, yeah, that's what I thought we were supposed to do. Just go in and out like, but from the set, luckily it evolved. No, he, and so it took off. And when I first came on staff here, you know, that was another one of the things your dad wanted me to yeah, do. Yeah, take was, it over. Was help with the skate ministry. So it was called Calvary Board Riders mm -hmm. when you did it. Yeah. Board yep. Riders. Yeah. And there were so many events that happened. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember being a kid, and I don't know BMX. if this was when you were here or if you put this on, but like I remember like MXPX coming with Joey Baran. We had this huge surf fest. At the Sanger? No, it was at this oh. old venue that's no longer around on the Bay, um, Bayfront. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Bay, really. Bayfront yeah, Auditorium. It's gone now. Yeah. I saw Jane's Addiction at the Bayfront Jane's Auditorium. Ooh. I don't know if you remember Jane's Addiction. I remember Jane's Addiction. Oh, yeah. 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 I shared the that's gospel crazy. with uh, Perry Farrell. Oh wow! In San Francisco one time at a shoe store. How'd that go? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Hey, but dude, that's but kind he, of the but, dynamic. But he was very here. kind. He was okay. super kind. You okay. know. But MXPX was before I came. It was before. Okay. Who yeah. had MXPX come? 
Must have been Tom. Tom Hudson? Tom yeah. Tom. Wow, Tom and man. Kent Vansel. Kent Vansel Kent was Vansel. always pushing like music. Vansel, like, Christian dude. bookstore guy. Kent. So Vansel and Tom kind of like. Well, I mean, he was or, just a guy working at a bookstore gotcha, that okay, loved yeah. to like. A great guy that worked at a bookstore. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. guy, not just a guy. A great guy that worked <laughs> at a bookstore. We love you, Kent. Wow. A great guy. <laughs> a great guy. So then. <laughs> then <laughs> he, he can tell you all about Squad But I remember like Switchfoot would come. Squad Oh my gosh. One of the best ones ever was. No one's going to watch this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. We'll <laughs> delete this. The best one best, best ever was uh, when we had slick shoes. Oh, I, I remember that. that. I, heard I was. Yeah. I remember seeing them come up to the church. And they stayed at the Bernard's house. Oh, wow. <laughs> And they, and they love the Bernards. Yeah, who they're like they're yeah. so redneck. I love them. Oh gosh, <laughs> well, 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 I can't say that. Well, they had a technical Ryan. rider. Larry, <laughs> they had a technical rider. Gosh, there's so many things I could say. <laughs> <laughs> but they had a technical rider, and they loved the Bernards. No, not a technical rider. They had like a like a hospitality rider. They loved the Bernards so much. They're like. We want to draft our rider. Then oh. it's like staying with the Bernards. Staying yeah, with the Bernards. you just have a picture them. of Larry. Yeah, so. Larry and Vicky. We love you, Larry and Vicky. They loved it. So, yeah. They didn't know what Larry was saying. But they loved. <laughs> you want to go geeking around? <laughs> yeah. Edit that out. <laughs> no. We would go geeking. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a the guy who used to come Larry. to Calvary, and he, uh, Larry, used to give you like a really soft handshake, right? And there's this kind of there was Wait, this, what? There was this. There was this interesting guy who came to. Interesting guy came to Calvary back then, <laughs> and he shook Larry's hand like in the auditorium. He's like, "What a soft handshake!" Larry goes, "Oh, come here." <laughs> Brought the guy to his knees. Oh, wow. wait a minute! Guy was like Larry crying. Bernard. Larry Bernard. <laughs> wow. And he's like, "Yeah, well, come here." And he. <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> so, so anyway, so, so, so anyway whole sec- Tom Hudson. All that to say. Yeah, no, 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 anyway, so, we, so we brought slick shoes, there right? There it is, slick yeah. shoes and the soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was was, so we like. Uh, we had a we brought in this BMXer. Oh yeah, I remember. That was the, huge then. And the BMXer, I I never even asked him, but I told the kids all week long that he was going to air over Miguel's Ford F one fifty. He's going to air the church <laughs> all week long. I'm like pumping up. I've never talked to him about it. I've never asked him if it's okay. And uh, uh, and then and then he's like the night of. It's like it's going to happen, right? And so we put the kicker up in front of Miguel's Ford F one fifty, and I. And there was like a thousand kids waiting. It was like the final thing. And he's like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I was like, <laughs> oh, the biker was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah, the biker. I don't know, dude. I've never done there. I'm like, there. I'm like, come on, man. You got this. You got this. <laughs> so he, you know, he just started. Killing Did he make? And he launches into the dark and. It, and once he clears Miguel's Ford F-150, like, all right, everybody inside. Uh, <laughs> you don't even know if he survived. <laughs> it's over. I don't, don't even know what either. happened to him. He just <laughs> off into the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's kids still talking today. Like, boy, I remember that you... I they, know, where that guy's big, buried? No. Oh, <laughs> campus? <laughs> so, no. So, so the, here's this like she's connection. So all the kids come inside, right? And they are so pumped because some dude just aired a Ford F-150 into the dark, so right? They think, yeah. Yeah. So they come into the, into they come the, into the sanctuary, and the moment they come in, and slick shoes just goes wah, and it was like throwing kerosene on a fire. Right, uh, a mosh pit. Hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing about this. A mosh pit broke. I out. wasn't here for this. I think a I mosh was pit here. broke out in the sanctuary. Oh my god! And, and all our like uh, ushers like, were like, "What the?" Like heck? shoes are flying everywhere, and I'm thinking, Pastor John. Shoes gonna, were flying. I'm like, Pastor John's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill you. And so, we, but he was right there in the middle. But it was, <laughs> no. uh, but it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it was just like. Full awesome punk rock yeah. in the yeah. sanctuary. They were a killer shoes. band, early O's. And it just got, it was like just getting completely out of control. And then Mike, Mike Myring. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big Mike. He, Big Mike. He, just, Big he Mike. just called it. And I was like, Mike, wait a minute. Like, I'm the guy We're making the fun. calls. <laughs> so he like backed off again. And then, <laughs> and then it was like two more songs. I was like, we, just, we can't do this. So anymore. was it during that era oh. that you guys did Today Skateboards? Or when did, because that's how you kind of connected with Mike. And you guys, Later. you did videography and travel. No, that, Gallagher did that. That was Gallagher. Oh, you didn't do Today's Skate I, I think, Doyle, you had already left, right? Yeah. I was already gone. I was living in San but Diego. But you you guys work together. Yeah, so, well, kind of like, yeah, when t- the Today's Skateboards, I think was 2004, that we, it was like me, Jesse, mm-hmm. Andy, Jason, um, Ollie. And Ollie Gray. <laughs> I love Ollie. Awesome. Ollie. Uh, he, uh, yeah, they, we, I don't know. We got together and I think after like talking with you and it, I think Jason and Jesse really were kind of like the brains behind it. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to, oh, okay. you know, we, we were like, Hey, let's do this thing that like we've seen, like we've been a part of things that you like had mana. Yeah. Like mana, oh, skateboards, yeah, mana having, skateboards, having like yeah. Judd, uh, Canton Russell and Josh mm-hmm. Casper mm-hmm. come out when the skate park yeah. was still mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Canton Russell and, just uh, followed our Instagram. Oh really? Remember? Yeah. Dude. I wonder, do you, have you heard anything from those guys? 
Are they I'm, still around? I haven't talked to him in a long time. But, <laughs> but, but Cam, was, Cam was one of the best guys we ever did. He did with. big airs. Yeah. Was, and people are like, oh. But he was also like, he he like got it. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. Like we kind of, that first first event we did, Cam and I kind of like co-preached the gospel. Mm. Yeah. And Cam was awesome. Yeah. 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 And that's, what, we used to go to all this. We used to, I, I want mean, you to keep talking, but we used yeah. to go to all the, the junior high schools and the high schools and all that. Mm. We did, we would get in everywhere. You probably, I don't Because of the skate demo. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, we, and I was bringing like pros in. Mm -hmm. like we went to Gulf Breeze Middle School. Mm. We went to yeah. Midway Middle School. Mm. Didn't you do yeah. something on the military base? But that was later. Randy Pittman did with that. The, oh, yeah. He okay. did something like a skate place. thing on but, the base. But with today's, during that era, there were a whole bunch of like kind of amateurs, like a sponsored am Christian skate teams. Yeah. There was King of Kings. Oh, that's right. Mana. There was one or two others. And today's, I would always use today's. Mm. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and that, uh, yeah, but that all stemmed from like seeing yeah. these guys come out, do a demo, uh, and you know, I remember like Jesse was good enough that he would like sneak in there and like do some big kickflip indie grab off a kicker, and I was yeah. like, ah, oh! and we were like, let's let's do this, but like just locally here in the yeah. area, go do skate demos at churches, ollie over kids, mm -hmm. get them hyped up, yeah, and then. Jesus. Uh, yeah, exactly. Kind of like what you were saying at the beginning. It was a little bit of like kind of bait and switch. But it was like, hey, come out. We're going to do the skating. We're going to give away boards, you know, this, yeah. that, and the other stuff. And then we just, yeah, we would share our testimony. But didn't you guys link up and do some things in like Scotland or Ireland? I we heard. did something separate. I never did anything with oh, Zach. Anything I was with in that. Mexico with Doyle and okay. Chad Tim Tim yep. and Mulder, Richard Mulder. What year was that? What have I been like? That's oh. when I broke my ankle, remember? Oh, yeah, you were like, no, that was that what? was Ireland. No, I'm pretty I, sure I, he broke it in Mexico. Double broke, broke it? it? I broke it in Mexico oh. and then was, was... It's all over the place. There's limping, so many stories. Was, was limping around Ireland. I don't know how you did Ireland because you had to do so much and you're like, didn't you get lost? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> didn't you get lost in Ireland or don't something? Don't even go there. <laughs> you like, now I that's why you get to an airport three hours early. Okay, now. I'll tell the story You like one slept last time. in Europe as a... I was an old. unorganized man. <laughs> no, no, here's how it went, right? <laughs> God. Can I, I tell my heard. side? Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. And I thought he'd be the responsible one. <laughs> I thought I was. So Doyle sends me these tickets Wrong. and I looked at the departing time. I was like, oh, that's the time we have to be there. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. I looked at the tickets that's one the time. time. We have to be there. So I show up with Andy Delahaye and Jason Gallagher. You should have given them to Jason, I guess. And I walked up I to the gate group, yeah. and they were like, your flight just left. And we were all like, oh my God. <laughs> and I remember Andy, Andy was like, Doyle's going to kill us. And I was like, let's, she's like, you can go home and get a flight tomorrow or leave now and sleep in like Philadelphia. And Andy was like, Doyle probably just wants us to leave now. So let's just go. And I was like, I felt so bad that I was like, I'll just go. So we went on the flight and like slept in Philadelphia. And then we had to stay till nine that night, whatever, fly again, got stuck somewhere else. I'm in Germany all of a sudden. No one speaks anything. And Doyle's, <laughs> no I'm like, Doyle's like at a demo going, oh, I'm just, like. and I'm like bringing along Andy and Jason and we get in a train and we get off because someone's like, yeah, get off, get off. We get off and then we're just, they we're at the wrong place. So to get by, it was this long and then I finally get there and it was like, oh. It was over. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was terrible. And that's ruined you for travel because you always get somewhere like four hours early. I now I, yeah, that trip. I go, when I go to airports, I'm there like three hours just like. <laughs> just sitting there shaking. Yeah. You're corner. responsible now. You've led. Oh, and then on that trip, Andy lost his plane tickets and that was back when you couldn't reprint them and he had to like oh, go behind a counter gosh. and get tickets. I was like, just let this end. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You guys yeah. were like sleeping in the Philadelphia. We slept in two airports, and you were just like, "John Spencer's gonna kill me." Like you thought we were gonna die and get lost, but it was it was bad. It was all my fault. I take full responsibility. <laughs> but I did step up and get us there eventually. <laughs> I, re I remember when you guys pulled up in the train station. I was like, "Oh, you were so mad!" I bet we're like, "You're like, hey, idiots." <laughs> It's all over. But but that, but that dynamic of world travel, that's been a part of your story. I mean, maybe before you were working here as a youth pastor, but definitely after. I mean, with like walking on water. Yeah. Because didn't you even do, I mean, obviously with Brian Jennings, that's a whole era where you helped mm -hmm. produce a lot of films and do, mm -hmm. or were part of the films and the events. But then, I, I mean, I think you had told me at one time when Hillsong United was kind of coming up as like a thing before they had peaked, you did some things with them. Like you've been all over doing stuff. Yeah, well, one of the coolest ones we ever did was um, we did a, a Noah's Ark premiere at Hillsong in Sydney, Australia. Whoa. And they had, huh. they have two facilities. They have their main sanctuary and then they have this kind of like event facility. We did it in the event facility. 
it was the largest youth event they'd ever done. They had over mm. like 3,000 kids there. They were, it was completely packed, kids sitting all along the floor. Hillsong United opened, mm. and we showed Noah's Ark, and then I shared the gospel that wow. night. Wow, that's awesome. Dude. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was like one for the books. Yeah. Wow. And I had become I had become friends with those guys. Yeah, I bet after an event like that. Yeah, and they, you know, I became r- real close to Joel. And there was a lot of years there before they before they came and started Hillsong New York. When they would come through, Luke is our manager. Luke would email me ahead of time and say, "Hey, Mike, you know, we got you two VIP tickets, and call me when you get here, and I'll take you back in the green room." So I would go back and pray with those guys in the green room before mm. they go out and do their concert. Mm, that's cool. That's, cool. that's neat. And then, and then once we, you know, once we were you know, pastoring churches in the same city, you know, we became a little more distant. Sure, yeah. But but what's interesting about it was um, I did the Outsiders premiere in Sydney, Australia, like about two years before that. And um, and we did, at the, we did it at the Sydney Opera Hall, and it was Britt, Britt Merrick, oh, Shared yeah, the Gospel Britt, at yeah. it. Wow. And we did a show in, in um, Sydney with the Sydney Opera Hall, and then we did one in Perth in Western Australia. Okay, yeah, I've been to Perth, yeah. And Britt and I became friends through that tour. Oh, that's how you met Britt, okay. And it was interesting was one night we were, like at, we were at like like the Hilton right there, like on the rocks in downtown Sydney. And this was about uh, six months before I ended up, or a year before I ended up like stepping down as youth pastor here. Mm. And I went out one night, and Britt and Brian Jennings were in the hotel room, and they were just chilling. I said, hey, I'm gonna go for a walk. And I'm like, they're like, all right, do you want to go with you? I said, no, I'm just gonna go for a walk. And so I walked over to Darling Harbor and I was walking back across this bridge and I had this apostle shirt on. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah. I, I went was, to Bible college with And that. I'm in like, the so. first time I've ever been to Sydney, Australia, I mean, I've been there about six or seven times now. It was the first time I'd ever been there. Mm. And I remember walking across this bridge and I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, um, Mike, I'm gonna send you all over the world and you're gonna be an apostle to the nations. Mm. 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 And I thought, that's crazy, that'll never happen. I mean, that, <laughs> that would be too good to be true. I mean, that'd be amazing. And then sure enough, you know, about six, seven months later, I mm-hmm. moved out to San Diego when I sat with walking on water and spent the next five years of my life like on an airplane. Yeah, that's traveling. crazy. So yeah. Like exactly what the Lord told me was gonna happen, mm. like happened. Yeah. So like my hero is the Apostle Paul. Yeah. yeah, You know, and that he's, and I, and I, I had, you know, I was an apostle to the nations, you know, yeah. I was just a messenger taking the gospel to the four corners of the earth. Yeah. And, and but the Lord told me that. Yeah. And I like again, I didn't believe it. I was like, no, nah, that's too good to be true. And yeah. That, and that's exactly what happened. Man, that's amazing. Cool. Dude. But what was cool too is you know, and Brit <coughs> Brit spoke at both those events, and mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't have a problem with that because I always looked up to Brit and sure. loved him, both physically and spiritually. But but part of me, <laughs> he's like yeah, six for like, six. Yeah, he's like <laughs> twice my size. <laughs> yeah, right? He's like, a huge guy. Yeah. <laughs> I could be his child. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Brit. And uh, but, but you know, there was a part of me, but, but, you know. Your dad probably doesn't know this, but there's a part of me that probably, like, well, I would have liked to have shared the gospel as events. But I did, oh, sure. But I didn't mind Britt doing it because I felt like he was a better communicator and I looked up to him. And so, right. but you're always like, ah, yeah. And then, <laughs> so two years later, to be at Hillsong, Australia. Oh, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. You know, 3,000 people, the largest event they ever did, and get up and share the gospel. I was yeah. just like, wow. That's amazing. That's cool. And I'll tell you one more little connection to that was when we were in Ireland, it was a trip that, that Ryan was on. What I used to do when we were, before we go on those mission trips to Ireland, I'd always buy a new worship CD, and that would be kind of like my soundtrack for that trip. Cool. And it was uh, Jesus, You're My Best Friend. Oh, yeah. It was like a really early Hillsong United. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Like they had kind a fully... of a little bit of a punk vibe to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was like uh, pop punk. Yeah, pop punk, yeah. And it was actually, Mar- it, it wasn't, Joel wasn't the, Joel wasn't the worship leader at that time. It was a guy before Joel. Okay. And I can't remember his name. Like Marty or yeah. JD? Or yeah, yeah, it was Marty. Yeah, Marty, yeah. And, um, but I bought that CD. And that was like my that was like my soundtrack. That was your theme, yeah. Yeah, and I would always do that. And that was like my theme when I was in Ireland. And I remember wrestling with like, you know, maybe you know, maybe stepping out in faith and like and moving to California and doing this whole thing and I wasn't sure about it. And I was driving a van and I was listening to that song and it was just this very simple line in the Hill in a Hillsong United song. He says, he says you you don't have to have all the answers before you step out in faith. Mm-hmm. And it just hit me. And That's I feel like cool. the Holy Spirit said to me, Mike, you don't have to have it all figured out. Like you mm-hmm. can you can mm-hmm. step out in faith and you don't have to have all the answers to step out in faith. Right. And that was another like peace in God giving me the courage to mm-hmm. take this big leap of faith, which I did, and it worked out. Mm-hmm. And that Hillsong United song was was a part of my story of mm. and then literally the fruit of that song was those those was two years later yeah. when I was on stage in yeah. Bill's song. Yeah. That's cool. The same band that God used to speak into my heart opened up for me before yeah. I shared the gospel that night. No, that's cool. Wow. That's cool. Isn't that wild? That's that wild. is wild. Cool. That is wild. Yeah, that's and from cool. a van in Ireland to like <laughs> on the stage of Hillsong, it was like, it was so surreal. It's crazy. And, you know, and you, you just sometimes you have life moments like that. that sure. are like these full circle full life circle, moments. Yeah. 
And um, but that song put put that little seed in my heart. Well, and that one line to that lyric also kind of brings us to that bridge of what you're doing now because. Like when was it? Like two mid two thousands or late two thousand or ten or somewhere in there, that you felt a call to step out again and then trying to maybe pivot from that itinerant traveling role to more of a church planner. And that was obviously in New York. But when was that? Yeah, it was it was two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yeah. When I when I moved to New York and I first moved there as a missionary. Okay. And so the first two years there, I was like a missionary, hmm. and then um, yeah, I mean I was. Uh, kind of like my like life plan was like I had always wanted to plant a church, mm -hmm. and so like I wanted to be a youth pastor. Like, you know, for some people that's like maybe they see as a stepping stone to something else. Like for me, it was like no, I wanted to be a youth pastor, mm -hmm. and I was actually excited about the thought of being a youth pastor in this town mm. because like my worst teenage years were like in this town. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Another so, full circle thing. Yeah. For you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so, and I, I wanted to come back here. And I didn't want to come back here. I didn't want to come back because I had a lot of painful memories here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this was like a really dark period of my life. Sure. But I wanted to come back because I wanted to minister to the, to the teenagers that went through all the stuff I went through. And the interesting thing about Gulf Breeze is kind of idyllic as it is. It has this real dark mm -hmm. underbelly to it. And I was mm -hmm. part of that kind of darker Gulf Breeze culture, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had a heart for the teenagers of this area. Hmm. And, I, and I wanted to reach them with the gospel to try to s save them from some of the bad experiences that I had. And so coming back here was like extremely redemptive. Mm. And I remember the first time, and I, I, had, I have so many bad memories of Gulf Breeze High School and bad stuff I did there. And I remember um, oh. first time I spoke at a first priority rally at Gulf Breeze High School was like a life-changing moment. Mm. And in the same high school that I'd done so many bad things, I came back mm. as a minister of the gospel mm. and I shared the gospel there. Mm. That's cool. And then we did these like big outreach events at Gulf Breeze High School. Like we did them in the we did them in like the uh, the basketball auditorium. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we would do like huge things in there. And I remember Johnny Smith, like he oh, had yeah. gotten saved and he oh, shared yeah. his testimony. Never in my wildest dreams that I ever think I'd be back at Gulf Breeze High School sharing the gospel to like hundreds of kids and like mm. outreaches there. Mm. And so God redeemed all that and He healed all that. Mm, that's cool. And so now when I come back, I don't have all these yeah painful memories. Yeah. I have all these like there's really, closure and healing yeah. and redemption to that. Yeah. And then um. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that line of thought. Well, just that <coughs> idea of being a missionary, and then oh, like oh, yeah. you stepped into that in New oh, yeah, York, and yeah. that's so, the mindset here. Yeah. yeah, so it was like I wanted to be a youth pastor, yeah, and then um, and then I wanted to be a youth evangelist, right? And I knew that like I had this one last window, and it was like where I could do that, and then before you kind of age out of it, you mm -hmm. know. And then I was always the interesting thing too is like your guys' generation, you were the millennials, right? But yeah. nobody knew that was like a thing. It was just this massive youth generation mm -hmm. that I was about 10 years older than, mm -hmm. you know, and... Gen X. Yeah, I, I was Gen X. Mm -hmm. and, and they call me an x annual because I'm kind of like really? analog kid, digital college. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like I'm always stuck. Like, yeah, I kind of oh, identify, yeah. uh, identify. Mike... Mike Neglia. Mike, yeah, he calls himself an Xennial. Yeah. yeah, that's what he told me. Hey, we're the Xennial. Yeah, well, you guys were like, and you guys were into punk rock. That was a Gen X thing. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I like punk rock. Punk rock is Gen X, and you guys, you guys kind of were into punk rock, you yeah. know? Yeah, got into the pop punk. Yeah, yeah. it was like an emo, which is Green cool. Day. Emo, yeah. Good old dashboard. Yeah, a little, yeah. Today. No effects. Sitting, sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> first hard. World albums. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I. And I knew, and I wanted to be a youth evangelist, and I wanted to travel the world and do all that stuff. But I knew I wanted to plant a church, mm. and I was getting to a certain age and a certain place in my life where, like, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it. This now. is the time. This yeah. is the time that's to do cool. it. How old would you have been, just for anyone that's listening to me, thinking like, oh, I'm too old? I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you were like in your late 20s, early 30s, yeah, planting a church. I was 35. 35, yeah. 12. And um, I remember talking to your dad about it. Your dad's like, oh, that's a great age to do that. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, and I, you know, I thought like, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it now. And I came up to the Cary Chapel world, yeah. and it's a church planning movement. Mm -hmm. And so I had always wanted to plant a church. Yeah, that's kind of seen. How I it's mean, from the yeah. moment I went to Bible college. So, but I knew that in the in the Calvary model, you kind of plant and die, you know. And so I thought, all right, <laughs> well, you're there. I mean, that's <laughs> no. Like oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. I, so, yeah. I, so in my mind, I thought, if there's anything I want to do. Like I gotta, I gotta do it before I plant a church. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew about the David Guzik model. At no, like, no, you no, no, for seven no. years and you no, can do it. Yeah, like, everyone's just, like, just shucks the way to do it. I guess. Any hope, or, <laughs> any hope or dreams or desires you have, <laughs> better pick the right city. Get them done yeah. before you. No, so I. Down. Yeah, so that's literally what I thought. So yeah. I was like, <laughs> I like New York. I'm gonna die yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I want to work with young people. I want to be youth evangelist. I want to travel the world, and then. And even my time of walking on water, I, you know, 
Brian wanted me to stay forever, but I knew I wasn't going to stay forever. Yeah. I knew it was kind of this a and season I, for And you. I also know that like, you know, you kind of, I was still close to you guys in age and I was close to young people that I could still relate to them and they, they could still relate to me and, and yeah. I, you know, but I knew I would age out of that. And so I thought like, and then I was living in San Diego and there's so many good churches in San Diego and they're pastored by my friends. Mm. I mean, it was all these mega churches that were, that were my friends that pastored them. And I thought, it, for, first of all, I'm not going to do a better job than these guys. Miles mm. McPherson's a big deal. Yeah, Miles right. McPherson, mm. Ray Bentley. Yeah. Um, so you know, just a lot of guys. A lot of guys I knew, and Miles and I became close. I was involved at the Rock. I taught this like big Monday night Bible study, and Miles and I became friends through that. And and I loved Miles. I'm like, he's like amazing. Yeah. And so I taught a Bible study because Miles is such an evangelist and yeah. I'm a little bit more of a Bible teacher. I thought, well, I can bless Miles. And so I had this like this Monday night Bible study with like a thousand people in it. And but I just thought like. San Diego, I felt like it was so set, and the guys that were doing ministry there, I had so much respect for. I thought, well, San Diego's good. I'm like, mm. where where needs it? Mm -hmm. I always try to do the hard thing. I'm always like, mm -hmm. like, don't do the hard thing, just do the hard thing that's dumb. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I always thought, my again, my hero's Paul, where he's like, you know, Paul was like, I want to go, I want to, you know, take the gospel where it hasn't been preached. Yeah, there's no right. need to be white noise. I mean, if you can go somewhere where you can have impact. Yeah, right. and, I, and I just mm -hmm. thought, like, I'm not going to, like, outdo, like, yeah. Miles or and yeah. Ray or any of those guys. So that I would just be another guy. So yeah. I thought, where, where can I leverage my life a little better? And mm -hmm. where's somewhere that needs it? And I've been thinking about the East Coast. And, um, and, I, was, and I, I lived in Solana Beach, and I would go surfing. And every day I would surf and pray, God, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to mm -hmm. go? And it's, to make a long story short, New York City came on my radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was actually in Asia at the time, and I was in Bali, mm. and uh, I was like in Hong Kong and Bali, and I was doing some outreaches there, and and I'm in Bali of all places, like one of those tropical places in the world. And when I'm in Bali, I feel like God was like, "Well, what about New York City? Go to concrete, mm. yeah. It's East Coast. Oh, it needs it, yeah. You know." And so I prayed about it, and I came back, and I told Brian, and he, Brian was very supportive. He's yeah, like, oh, Brian with Costa Mesa, yeah. Mm. Um, Oh, and Brian Jennings. Yeah, I told Brian. Yeah, Brian had Brian Jennings had the most to lose. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but Brian was a good guy. He's like, he's like, yeah. it'll be the end of walking on water. But he says, but I want what's best for you. But Mike. Broderson, he also became a part of your story. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Broderson, I become friends because yeah. I, I did this big movement event. At yeah, Costa over Mesa. at Costa Mesa. Yeah, and those went really well. Brian, I became friends with that. And I remember calling Brian, calling Britt, calling all those guys. You know. And I said, guys, what do you think about this? And, like, mm. and then Pat Ray, they're like, Mike, you should do that. It's good to have that kind of concert of individuals yeah. who can come and they're all like, counsel. Yeah. I, I respect them, and they're yeah. successful guys. And uh, so I became a missionary, moved to New York City as a missionary, and started a Bible study, and um, planned a church out of it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's where you are now. You're that's in New York. now, yeah. yeah. And then the last year, um, COVID for us, you know, and I think it was true for you guys, too. COVID for us was like, it was, we thrived through it. It was mm. kind of a blessing for us, mm. you know. Cool. And um, we had our best year ever financially. And mm. Mm. I don't know. I think the big challenge now for New York City churches will be, um, like, what does ministry look like in a post-COVID New York? Mm -hmm. And we got hit mm. so hard. You did, mm. yeah. And it's so dense. Yeah. And everybody rides the subways. Yeah. yeah. That um, I think uh, I think it's, it's going to be it's going to be a very different world. Yeah, redefine New York. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's. It's just, yeah. it's been a crazy journey, man. Mm. Well, but I think it, we've all like, even the, the reason the three of us sat down is we've all been beneficiaries of your obedience mm -hmm. to follow For the sure. Lord as an evangelist or a youth pastor, or obviously a church, I mean, even today we're learning and growing from what God's done in your life. So I think that's why the four, th three of us wanted to sit down as four, because yeah. we've, you know, you've played a role in each of our mm -hmm. lives and continue to do so. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. I mean, Ryan's running Coastline Skate alongside yeah, we, Zach nowadays. I would say with you being in my life and other guys like Dale, Tom Hudson, uh, Jeremy Cook, yeah. um, I kind of took everything, and Zach. I took kind of everything I saw through skate ministry, the goods and the bads of stuff, but like of how you guys set up things and and we kind of made it the most simple situation we could make with the shed out by the road. Mm -hmm. And we have skate, we've had about five years now we've done it. And we met like, I think four years ago at Starbucks, you probably don't remember, but we like hung out and talked for a little bit and you gave me a little bit of like attaboy kind of stuff. But yeah. yeah, but it's going on right now. Like we just did it two weeks ago and Zach shared the gospel, shared his life verse and it's going on still. What's your life verse? Yeah. Matthew six thirty three. It's more like I always have to remind myself: seek first the kingdom of God oh, okay. and His yeah. righteousness. And just wanted to see if you had yeah. one. Yeah, Neil, yeah. you said it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's still going on in our little parking lot. Zach was saved at it. How old were you when you were oh, saved in cool, the? Yeah. yeah, so I was probably uh, I think sophomore, maybe a freshman in high school. Yeah, Dilla Hayes were like, "Hey, come out to this, you know, skate thing." That's uh, with the park. Uh, yeah, I remember coming out to the park. 
and uh, and you know just totally being whatever not listening but I think you know, <laughs> not, not listening. So impactful. it was impactful but it, though. it took a few times but you know like because I, I had grown up going to church and uh, you know my parents always made me go but then right. it was like finally when I heard from a guy who was like invested like in the lives skater. of skaters and then honestly Jesse and Andy like spoke so highly of you I think that that's whenever I started coming to the skate thing but then hanging out and actually starting listening and like, right. the Lord you know slowly like got a hold of my you know heart yeah. and got my attention and, and then was, you went to bible college in europe yeah after that yeah 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 so i think yeah so the lord used you mike and skate ministry to kind of get my attention and then pastor john gave like an altar call on a sunday morning and i went forward mm -hmm. and okay. that was i think it was like the summer of uh between my sophomore and junior year that's when i like okay committed my life to christ but then yeah then that's when Jason and Jesse and all of us were like, hey, let's, let's get together today, skateboards and do that whole thing. Crazy. But then, like you said, Ryan, I think at that point, uh, Dale had become our youth pastor. And then, mm. yeah, senior year, it was like, uh, well, I don't know. I, I ain't never, I went, I graduated from Foley High School in Alabama, but I never, <laughs> I never thought about like, what am I going to do? What college am I going to go to? That never, but like after I got saved and kind of got a little bit of experience just watching you and like, I think emulating that, like, oh, no, here's what we do. We go out and skate, do right. a demo and then share the gospel and give the kids an opportunity to respond. Mm -hmm. And then, and then give them a, a Bible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of like, I, I think we like saw that in you mm. because we, you know, like you allowed us to be a part of that. But then after that, it was like, well, I don't really want to go to college, but <laughs> I'd like to go to Bible college. Yeah. But I asked my parents about going to Marietta mm -hmm. and they were like, Southern California, Southern California, skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And I think at yeah. that point it was like, I still maybe thought like, oh, maybe there's a chance that like be pro skater. I could be a pro skater or something. Uh, and so they were like, no. <laughs> but, then, but then, but go to Europe. But my stepdad is Serbian. That's true. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and he found out about Calvary Chapel Bible College, Hungary. Yeah. Uh, and then that's when that's when you met Allie. Yeah, that's where I met my wife. So yeah, because of who, Mike. Because you're of Mike, married with three you kids. married Allie. <laughs> and I have three kids now. You ended she, up in Hungary. I ended up in Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> I got there and I said, "Mike, <laughs> what'd you do? <laughs> this is all your fault. <laughs> Why am I not in Southern California?" Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do remember having a moment. It was probably like eight months after being there. I was like, I'm in the middle of this small town, like three hours outside of Budapest, and I'm like what the heck am you're I an doing? Alabama boy I'm like I'm in Hungary at a Bible college and I was doing skate ministry with Mike and we were like traveling around and now I'm here but That's then funny. I felt like the Lord was like your life's not about you it's about me mm. and I was like okay <laughs> cool and then, I, and then I dropped out <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> and then I dropped out and then I dropped out, <laughs> dropped out. <laughs> three semesters but yeah. But you were you were a good skater, Zach. I remember. Oh, he's so good. I remember one demo we did in Dublin, yeah, at that skate park by the airport. Yeah, and um, yeah, you kind of you won that de you won that demo. <laughs> he's consistent. He yeah. still skates well. I mean, yeah. you have video from two days, yeah. or two weeks ago. His knee's a little bit shot. I got a little bum knee now, but uh, <laughs> well, I was I was snowboarding with David Riesbeck a week ago. Oh, yeah. dude, I think I saw uh, him post that mm -hmm. up yeah. in Mammoth or something. Yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> golly. Yeah, we did, we did two days of spring snowboarding in Mammoth. That was pretty nice. Did you have fun? Yeah. Dude. Your knee's good? Oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't think he got, yeah, I don't think he, he can't really skateboard it. Well, no, he actually does. He skates <laughs> you know a lot. Yeah, he, he, he does. does skate. He had skated that yeah. weekend. Yeah. And then it's like, they do a thing called Old Guys Tour. Mm -hmm. And it's all these guys in their 40s, and they'll go like on a week long skate trip. That's in a van. But yeah, Riesbeck was part of that mix. Yep. Yeah, I remember. I, he was. Yeah. And he had like, a, he had this one big trick he always did. It was like a tray flip. He or always something. did a tray flip off a kicker. Yeah. To flat. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he, Jesse Dillahay mm. in Ireland. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if you, I don't know if you weren't that. I don't think you were at that one. It was like the Jamie Thomas one. Yeah, I was on that one. You we were, you were there, right? He we backside were, lipped something. Oh, well, and then he did like, uh, I don't know all the technical terms. It was like he did, it was like a, Backside 180 kickflip. He kickflip backside it. lipped into over a, like a flat to a like Rail. a yeah. And Whoa. Jamie was pretty stoked. Oh like my that. god! Yeah, it yeah. was sick. And I was doing these like six foot high early grabs. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. would do like manual contests with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Irish kids like they didn't understand skateboarding at that point because it was so new and it was like they just thought I was like Tony Hawk. Yeah, because you would uh, early grab. Yeah, yeah these huge early grabs and. Yes. You would wait like five minutes and then like. All right. Then do another one. Yeah. There's a new group of kids not watching. <laughs> well, and the other thing too was like, 
It, it was like a Samson, like the Holy Spirit came on me and I was doing all the stuff. I'd be like, <laughs> he was doing back. Oh, I was like, I don't even know the who Irish I am. Samson? Yeah. Is that what you said? He's like, like six foot high, like, I do remember. That. Airs. I think I remember my dad was like, I didn't know Doyle was so good at skating. <laughs> I know. I was like, so then the funny thing, so we come back from Europe and I go out to our skate park. I'm like, I got this. <laughs> And it was like the dee, spirit dee, had dee. left. It was like a little ding, ding, ding. spirit had departed. Yeah, it was. It was so like I had this like anointing that I don't normally have, and I thought oh, I, I'm like this killer skateboarder. I came back. I'm really yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I remember that they were getting peaked. hyped up before a demo, and it was just like, dude, when there's like kids, and, and when you're on the mic, and you're like. They're Pro skating ten kids. Oh, and it was like, uh, I guess we're gonna try an ollie ten. No, I remember Doy would always call you guys like some of you pros, like Jason Gallagher, pro skater, <laughs> and everyone. And I'd be like, Jason's not pro. <laughs> He's really good. But You're like, <laughs> no, Jason's amazing. But well, the human ollie was always like our like. Yeah, that was our banger. Yeah, yeah dude. People would be like, ah, oh, yeah. one more person. <laughs> <laughs> Did it ever not work out? No, you guys knew when to tap out. Yeah. Well, Matt Beach landed on a kid one time. Oh, did he? <laughs> and Matt was like a really sensitive guy. Oh, he was so, so like a little Irish girl. He was so bummed. Oh, wow. He just like, I had to like counsel him. That's going to be all right, man. Don't worry about it. She's well, fine. She'll, she can, she's she in heaven. Like, she's yeah. great. <laughs> she's a believer. <laughs> she's a believer. <laughs> she's in a better she's place. But, and, we, and, we, and we'd always be like, can you do one? Like we knew yeah. how many you could do. Yeah. But we're like, I don't yeah, know if you can do a fourth yeah. one. I don't know if you can do a fifth one. But we knew about 10 was the limit. But I think the Max Riesbeck did it, and I think you were at that one. It was in New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, 52 yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> 12 kids. That's insane. Gnarly. Oh. That was gnarly. That's, that's like a Jordan air. It's just like you, yeah. and you just, you remember Jordan, he would like, oh, yeah. he'd jump, and then Free he would just go line. sideways yeah. for like 10 feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Cheat mode. Yeah. Cheat mode. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, uh, Ryan's checking his phone. So hey, Ryan's checking his phone. Yeah. No. So, no um, New Hampshire. Dude. Hey. So, so he... Yeah. He cleared twelve people and then he, and then he blew his pants out. Wait, what? His, <laughs> his pants, pants like exploded. Ripped? Oh, his Crunched. pants like Taco Crunched. Bell yeah. blowing it out? No, 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 no. He's like the back of his mean, pants man. just like <laughs> exploded. Yeah. <laughs> That's the weirdest word. <laughs> Don't say exploded. <laughs> but he stuck it. It was like thanks for like, coming. Oh, <laughs> and then boom, his pants exploded. exploded. Yeah, you were on that trip because I picked you guys up. Because your pants exploded. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more fun story, right? Because <laughs> I picked you guys up in Boston. Yeah. And we were all into that that band that was out of Las Vegas. The Killers? The Killers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember them. Did yeah, we listen to I The remember. Killers in the minivan all the way up to New Hampshire, yeah. Just crying. <laughs> Somebody told me <laughs> that you had a bar. I remember we were like on our way to that skate park and you, uh, I was like, just I just looked up to Mike. I was like, dude, I can't believe I got asked to come on this skate trip. With and Mike Doyle. was like, Zach, why don't you pray for us before we go on the skate park? And I was like, okay. So I'm in the car and I'm like, Lord, uh, I, I just pray that you'd help us to be safe. And when we're done with the demo, then we're all sitting in the hot tub tonight. <laughs> I don't know why. I said something about us all sitting in the hot tub together as dudes. And Doyle was like, whoa, man. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I, told him, I got nervous. <laughs> we're all going to be hanging out, right? Oh After the demo, our sore muscles. <laughs> what? I don't know, dude. We bottomed out. It sounds like an animal chin kind of thing. You know, we just decided not to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Those are interesting days. Oh, man. Well, you're no longer doing that. Nope. No. No. Hot tubbing it in New Hot Jersey. Full wherever. circle. Back here at Coast Ride. But and here's, yeah, you know, one, um, one little redemptive part of all that was there were a lot of good kind of Christian, I don't know what the right term is, like sponsored amps or whatever. But, and I could have worked with a lot of people back then, but I always worked with you guys because you were humble. Mm. Mm. Humility. And so I, you guys were humble. I'm serious. And that's why, and then you guys always respected me. And, I, and I'd ask you to do kooky stuff. You know what I mean? Like the human ollie and all. You know, and you guys were like tr true skateboarders. But you, but you understood the bigger purpose. Right, right, yeah. And you guys went along with it. And you knew that it was like, you know, it's not the most core skate thing to do. Yeah. But you guys got the purpose and the bigger mission. And you knew the it was gospel-centered. Well, you know. just like you, even how we started, they both exper they experienced that kind of with you leading that they became believers you know right. so they benefited from the greatest platform of this whole evangelistic world tour they experienced new life in jesus mm -hmm. and so right. i think because of that skateboarding's a tool it's totally not, yep. you know it's not an idol it's not a master it's a it's a good thing it's not a god thing yep and so that's that's why they got it that's yeah, cool. i can use them and even with the base which i that's kind of I, I always felt too like i felt like we we gave people like a legitimately good event in exchange. Yeah. Just give me 10 minutes of your attention. Yeah. Right. 
And most people actually respected that trade off. Yeah. You know, and I feel like we put on a first class event. A lot of places we went, it was like the coolest thing that ever happened there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we did a walk in a water premiere in Virginia Beach. And it was like the largest surf event ever in Virginia Beach. Mm, Virginia Beach is like cool. the Huntington Beach of the East Coast. Mm. And even West Lane was a very famous surfer in Virginia Beach. I looked at when I was a little kid. He was, we did it at the Virginia Beach Convention Center. It was like 5,000 people. And we had freestyle motocross and all this stuff. And West Lane was like, Mike, how did you do this? And it was like, I said, well, West is the Lord. You know, God opened all these doors. And mm. it's always felt like we gave people like a legitimately good time. Mm -hmm, and right. all I asked was just, if you just let me talk for 10 minutes about Christ. And yeah. you, don't, you don't even have to agree with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I respect you if you don't believe me. Yeah. But just give me your attention. And people, I think, I felt like everyone saw this as a legitimate trade off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we yeah. saw people come to Christ through it. Yeah. And, yeah. and the last thing I'll say too is that what happened when you guys were young. That whole era was like it was, especially in Gulf Breeze. That was like a move of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really neat thing. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize too at the time was that it was a generation. It mm -hmm. was the millennial generation, mm -hmm. and God really moved in your generation. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and and so many of you guys have gone on to to be in the ministry and become pastors and mm -hmm. get married and have families. And it's just a really really neat story. Sure, for yeah. sure. And yeah. I'm so glad that your dad all those years ago would asked me to come back and be the youth pastor. Here, sure, and I got yeah. to be a part of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even in New York, I've reaped a lot of the fruit of that. You mm -hmm. know, through the years, a lot of people have attended movement. Even guys, you know, uh, Steve Valesky and Matt mm -hmm. Mortimer, they're all Pensacola guys. Mm -hmm. True, yeah. Because of mm -hmm. the, you know, the four and a half years I was youth pastor here, I bore fruit, you know, a decade later in New York City. Sure, right, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. God yeah. wastes nothing. He doesn't waste anything. Yeah. And and what I always saw with, with the young people at Calvary too was like, I, I always tried to teach you guys and treat you like you were adults. Mm. We weren't like the mm. we we weren't like the funny bunny youth group. You know what I mean? It was like, and that's if you're funny bunny youth group, that's fine. I'm not like knocking, but I always treat you guys like adults, right? And um, and I think um, you know, and so many of you guys went on to do such great things. I'm so proud of all of you, all of you yeah. guys. So it's yeah. well, cool. Well, thanks for your time. Absolutely. Yeah, and hopefully we'll have you back again. Yeah. yeah. All, all right. right. Thanks. Cool. I think we did what we were supposed to. That's it. <laughs> two, two, two hours of stories. <laughs> Larry awesome. Bernard, don't shoot me. <laughs> Yo, that's what I love this kind Dude. of style. Because people actually want to watch it. Yeah. yeah, people will talk to it. Oh, man. Oh! Did you hear the chords? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he didn't record. He didn't record.